Hey traders, checking out on the stock market today. So a couple earnings reactions from some big tech names holding up the tech sector for the first part of the day, but a little bit of a sell-off into the close has daily consolidation clearly underway. We're scouting daily higher lows. Let's check in on the charts. So SPY daily consolidation is underway. We broke the low of yesterday. S&P 500 tried to hang on. And again, it did for the morning. We had a 15 minute falling wedge, broke bull, but then we triple topped. So look at this resistance here. That's now going to be a key level for me in the short term. When you reject from something clearly three times and then dump as a result, that is notable. So for SPY, that level is going to be in the 457s. We got three tops in the 457s to be watching from here. But again, bulls were fine all day. You know, we set a 15 minute tightening range. We broke bull, but then into the close is when things rolled over. So as I mentioned yesterday, I'm in an SPXS swing for this daily consolidation. My stop is over the all-time high. I would probably exit at in hourly oversold conditions from here, but just taking it one day at a time. And again, just first hedge predict pre protection in a long time because we were overextended and we had XLF and a stair-step pattern that we were looking for, a break of, and so we're getting that daily consolidation now. QQQ, same deal as far as tops. So yeah, we got an all-time high, but again, these are not convincing breaks. We've now got a triple top or quadruple top or whatever you want to call it in the 382s. And yes, this level is a little bit different on the futures chart because of the dividend. But one thing that we can certainly say is that we have not seen a convincing bull break. So we're watching for the potential that that leads to daily consolidation. There is a wall of resistance here on the NASDAQ futures right now. So we had a bullish reaction to some earnings. Google was bearish after hours yesterday. Bulls did nothing but buy today. This is automated buying. Look at that five minute time frame. Just beast mode. Hourly bull flag trying to form. So when I say QQQ is controlled by big tech names, just a few of them, it's essentially Google. Amazon had a good day. Upper Wick with the sell off into the end of the day. And then Microsoft. And that was pretty much the reason why QQQ was having a really good day because I look around and, you know, Netflix is down, Facebook's down a percent, Apple was in the red or flat most of the day. So it's a few big names running th things. And keep in mind, again, IWM as an ETF, its largest holding is 0.66%. QQQ as an ETF, largest holding is double digit percent. So a few names are extremely important for these ETFs. So QQQ, have to break the load today, tomorrow for daily consolidation to be underway. Anything above 372.39 will be a daily higher low. IWM, rising wedge, bear break. It was a little bit of a four hour rising wedge, but again, the, the red flag was yesterday and just recognizing, uh oh, we may need weekly consolidation. Close at the low of the day, two days in a row. Weekly consolidation is underway. So if we're going to get a breakout, we have to set a weekly higher low and then follow through from here. But that's a lot of volume on these last two days. So definitely need to be cautious and bulls need to show up. We got a gap at 222.70, weekly higher low must form. A large part of this weakness was the financial sector pulling back. And we can look at yesterday and say, well, yesterday we started a pullback and closed weak and it was a bit of a red flag. And that was without any real weakness in XLF. XLF closed green yesterday. So we know that XLF is the largest sector holdings in IWM. And we could say, well, if we're already starting consolidation in IWM and XLF has not started pulling back, when XLF sees daily consolidation, we're likely to drop. Again, XLF, great follow through. These stair step signals are on point. Even if that's our daily higher low, that is certainly a significant enough signal here. Higher low every day, big pullback. Higher low every day, Big pullback, higher low every day, big pullback, higher low every day. So far, a little pullback, but certainly a worthwhile one. We had a strong five minute and hourly oversold bounce first thing, V shape, but then that was it. That was bulls used up, all, used up all their buying juice on that first bounce. And it was a good one. One and a half percent means the leveraged ETFs went three to four and a half percent, but did not confirm a five minute trend change and gave the entire move back. So we're scouting a daily higher low in XLF. Hourly RSI did, again, it got to 30.31 on that first five minute flush. 
and now got oversold into the end of the day. So the bulls have to change the hourly trend back in their favor for a daily higher low to be shaping up. And again, there's tons of space for it to form. Question is how much follow through can bears put together after the stair step up move has broken bear every single time. It's more than one day of pullback that can always change, but bears are looking for some follow through. Healthcare sector has been the laggard bull bouncing around, but topping out a bit now, double bottom with the low of yesterday. If that level breaks, daily consolidation underway. I personally would call anything under 127.73 a daily higher low. Have to lose the daily uptrend for the weekly lower high to be shaping up. But it is potentially shaping up as we have two days left in the week. Biotech sector, we knew it was weak, and now it's testing support. If 121. 76 breaks. We're looking back down at 118. Bears are very confident here. Bulls are attempting to play defense. They have been successful thus far, but they've got to show up again tomorrow to play defense again tomorrow. Semiconductors, we are watching for a weekly lower high. Again, the fact that it didn't hit an all-time high when NVDA and AMD are so strong. So weekly time frame. Potentially that lower high shaping up, but we are still in a daily uptrend. So same as XLV, as far as needing to lose the daily uptrend for that weekly lower high to be set. Tesla with a daily inside bar. Bulls did a good job holding on. Set an hourly lower high at the high of the day and still holding the $1,000 support. So hourly equilibrium shaping up. If it breaks bare, we scout hourly oversold and a daily higher low. It's just a, a trade that I'm patiently waiting for. And if it breaks bull, I've got no interest in a bull entry up at these levels. So overall for the market, consolidation underway. Let's check in on the VIX. VIX bounced right above RSI where it historically bounces. 37 RSI, again, looking back in the past over the last four years, we bounced from 34 to 36 every time. That is the low And this time around, didn't quite get there, but got real close. So the lesson is, if the VIX has a daily RSI between 34 and 37, look to hedge. Look to hedge a long-term portfolio. And it can take a while to play out. And we chopped around here for three days before the notable bull break today. But it's just a really nice signal. Eventually it won't work, but utilize it until that's the case. So daily consolidation, and we'll see if it remains healthy. Again, SPY and QQQ, it's very healthy, big picture. We know we have to consolidate on the daily. There are no major red flags. Show up with increasing daily bear volume, take out daily higher lows. That will stand out to me. But at the moment, I don't see any red flags as far as the consolidation we're seeing in the broader market. IWM? A little bit different. IWM has a wall of resistance and is pulling back on the weekly. So we do have to ensure that a weekly higher low forms there because it is weaker on the longer term time frames than many of these other sectors. So the wild names we were looking for, daily higher lows and 50% bounces. Doesn't have to be in one day. BKKT, gap down open. DWAC, higher open. Didn't get the gap down I wanted. But bulls front ran the gap fill. So the gap fill was $52. We dropped down to $52.77, and then we bounced 40%. So not 50% yet, but again, that's what I'm talking about with volatility in both directions. And once we set a convincing daily higher low, if we break the high of tomorrow, we then scout a daily lower high and for the range to continue to tighten. What I wanted to point out today is that I missed DWAC. It had a clear bull break from an hourly higher low. So it had the morning bull move, which was great. This consolidation was an hourly higher low. The bulls confirmed the five minute trend change and they took off. I missed this move. I was at lunch. No, not at that point. I was recording crypto videos or something. And so I missed that move. That breakout started at 155 and really got going early after two. That happened there. It happened on PHUN because they are correlated. PHUN is starting to show itself as as a lot weaker than DWAC. And I'm viewing all three of these names as correlated names in the same sector because they're running at the same time and they're running in the same manner. 
So, P-H-U-N, come on, trading view. It's because I got 500 tabs open of it. So P-H-U-N, the bull break took place, hourly consolidation, and then no real follow through. But what was happening on BKKT at that point? BKKT had a beautiful bottom fish first thing. Low pre-market was $20. It was one of the plays highlighted on the morning live stream. And I didn't take that play because I generally don't trade in the first 15 minutes when I'm live streaming. But the low pre-market was $20. The only entry for a bull is a bottom fish off $20 because there's no other support level nearby. We held it first thing by 51 cents. We held it by 32 cents. Five minute equilibrium broke bull and took off. And I've got my timing wrong. So the play that I was looking for was the earlier in the morning move. And I missed the, the morning move on DWAC, this bounce, because it came straight off the low. No five minute trend change, no nothing. We just went 20%, more than that. We went 30% essentially. But that break really got going at 1025, 1030, 1035. Missed it. And I looked at BKKT and I said, that's a clear five minute equilibrium. Well, let's see if it acts as a laggard. I'm going to make an entry on a higher low. And we were consolidating on the five minute time frame while the other names are breaking out. So I made an entry for a five minute higher low in the low 21s. I sold half fairly quickly. So I'm risk free. And then the breakout takes place and we run 20%. So I wish I used a bit more position size. It ended up being a, a two day maker of a win. I did get back a little bit of those profits trying to play these high flyers a little bit more later in the day. But the point of the story is correlations, watching peers, recognizing a breakout in one place saying, okay, I missed it, but here's a very clearly defined risk reward scenario that I'm comfortable with and a pattern that I'm comfortable with. Let's see if it follows along. And just putting yourself in a low risk, higher reward scenario with information gathered from other places. Eyes on multiple places all the time, multiple eyes. All right, do good things. Hope you had a good day. We'll see how significant consolidation gets. And we'll see you tomorrow. I'm letting all these flowers and pots go to seed. Curious to see next spring around the base of all these flower pots, if we can get a impromptu flower garden going. Planted seeds in here. These holes are a kind of bug and it goes in the center under the ground and when the ants and bugs fall into it, they get trapped. It's almost like the movie Tremors where they come out of the ground. But I planted a bunch of stuff in here, a bunch of dark greens, so kale and chard and collards and all that stuff. This is the plastic I'm gonna to use to cover the beds. This watermelon plant was very late, but we may get something. Morning glory. These cypress trees are starting to change. The one on the left always changes way faster than the one on the right. Staggered stages. I've been mowing the lawn and collecting a lot of the leaves and just chopping them up and putting them in a big pile. And I use that for covering beds and things in the spring. And eventually it'll be in some nice soil. I'm gonna build a much sturdier trellis for this climbing vine. Maybe even send it over to that tree. This is the mint winter. I forget what kind it is, you can see it moves underground essentially and pops up all over. All the other different kinds did not do nearly as well. But this whole bed will be mint in a couple years. This is pineapple sage that is doing really well late into the year. Collard greens. Some dandelion greens. This is clover which does some nitrification with the soil, cover crop, marigolds are dying off. I'm gonna plant garlic in here 
soon.